I would love to introduce Louise Lose Fanau. We're so happy to have you here this afternoon. My name is Rebecca Nichols and I'm moderating this interview. I heard that you are a native San Francisco um, and I would love to know where you were born, some of your early history, who were your parents, um, if you had any brothers or sisters, children. Um, I'd love to know who they are and a little about them. Okay. Well, I was born in 1930 at the old Franklin Hospital, which is no longer in existence, you know, near Church in Davos. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, Louise M. Davies now. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a nice little hospital at that time. and uh, then I, I think you brought, you have a baby picture with you. Yeah. I would love to see it. Yeah. This is... Uh, when I was about one year old, this one in the corner. And these other pictures here are of my life a little later on when I became a professional dancer. Beautiful. But Beautiful baby. <laughs> I have my finger up, so like I'm teaching something because that's part of my life too. I'm right. <laughs> it all it all comes. Yeah. Um, your parents. What's your what were your, what were your parents' names? My father's name was Louis or Lure in Germany. Um, his name was Stelling, or Stelling, and he came from northern Germany, near Bremerhaven. And when he was about 21 years old, and he met my mother here, and she was from Missouri, mm. and they met at a dance. Right. <laughs> and at um, a ballroom on Market Street, Upper Market Street. Oh. Um, and... Uh, then they settled down. They had my brother first. What's your brother's name? Ralph. Okay. He is not living any longer. Mm -hmm. But uh, a profession that he he didn't actually have a profession. He he kind of was like a hippie. Oh wow! <laughs> at that time, right? Uh, he uh, he had um, a free thinker. He was a free thinker yes. and a free liver, and <laughs> he just went and did his thing, and he yep. was. Uh, and he was um, older than you? He was about five years older than I was. Okay. Or, yeah, five. And so I was born, and then we moved to Prague. Uh, my first home as a baby was in Pro uh, on Prague Street. Now, Prague Street is closer to Daly City, going east. It's, it's below, lower uh, below Outer Mission. <laughs> And so shortly after that, they bought a home in the Sunset area on 34th Avenue. That's the first home that I really remember uh -huh. was on 34th Avenue. And it was, you know, there's a lot of fog out there. And sure. It, and those days, it, at the end of our block, there was nothing except sand dunes. Right. right? And that's all built in, sure. you know, since the Second World War. And they put up a lot of crack of uh, quick fit, quick houses. Quick houses, yes. Sure. And um, but my first home was out on Thirty Fourth Avenue. And, and where did you move from there? Do you remember? Uh, Baker Street. It's close by here. Uh, so into to mm -hmm. the Haight Ashbury yeah. area. My father was a grocer. Oh. And uh, he would um, open grocery stores, and he would stock them, and he and then he would sell them. Oh. And this was his forte. And so he opened and closed about 50 stores in his lifetime. So a lot of the grocery stores we have, they're still existing. All, all around all the over. Hate Street, all, all right. around the Hate area, all these little stores that you see were opened by my father what, what or did his people, brothers. What do people know him as his name? The Stellings Grocerias. Okay. <laughs> and for just a little while, a um, few years ago, they still had retained the name of the Stellings Market up here on Parnassus, I think it was. Wow. And they just recently changed that. But that was it. the last of the named. So when stores. you were in this area here, about how old were you? About what year was this? Oh, I was just a little baby then. I was only about three years old, four years old. And then um, when, I, when we were out on 34th Avenue, then I was five years old out there. And then the Depression came. And came with a, a thunderclap to my father because he had invested in a lot of stores and, sure. and he lost a lot. And he also had um, some of, someone that was very unreliable that he trusted that took uh, advantage. advantage of him. And uh, 
So he lost a lot. And right. at the same time that that happened, he, our family fell apart. A lot of pressure. He put. Of he started to drink, and he was not the same person that he was before he drank. And he had a lot of talent, even though he did drink. Right. <laughs> he was always able to provide a good home for his wife and his children. But when he drank, he was a monster. He had a Nazi temperament. And because he grew up in Ger Germany, and actually before he. Um, before mm -hmm. not, um, mm -hmm. Hitler came into power as strong, he, he would collect um, pictures of Hitler and have them in, in an album. And he would show them to my brother. And he, they thought that he was the greatest thing that ever happened to Germany, which most of the German people thought too. In the beginning. In right. the beginning. When he went off the deep end and we became um, enemies, you know, um, they became our enemies sure. in the Second World War. Everyone in the family that was German stopped talking German. <laughs> and he got rid of his scrapbooks. Scrapbook right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> we didn't want to go to concentration camp like the Japanese, you know. Right. Exactly. And they were contemplating that possibility. Wow. So, um, um, so yeah. Interesting. Then uh, that was my father's side of the family. My mother's side was, uh, they were a little illustrious. We have a, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Really? I told you we go back to Washington. We have an aide-de-camp aide that wow. lived there. It's all documented in our, our family history. Wow. So it's so through mother's so line? My mother's side, yes. In Doling Park in Missouri. Do you was, know who it was that signed the, the Yeah, name? Thomas Stone. Oh. Uh-huh. And this was my grandfather of that same line who um, let's, let's take a close line. became um, First, an accountant at um, Gump's, and then became the treasurer of Gump's, and then finally the executor of their estate. Wow. And he was uh, highly thought of by the Gump's people. That's a very famous um, sure. uh, department store, sure, sure. Um, art center. I was a little girl when he would take me through Gump's, and they, were, they would um, collect beautiful arts uh, objects sure. that came from the Far East yes. in those days. I mean, like that big Buddha that's in the in the Golden Gate Park that was do donated by the Gums family. Wow. To the park. Wow. And um, they had statues, and uh, I would go through it, through it with him. And he, one time he opened a, up a little tiny uh, jeweled case, and and he said, "Watch this, Louise." And I was, must have been about four or five years old. And I never forgot it. It flipped open. And this little bird stood up and sang a song, turning this way and that way, oh. just in that little tiny box. Right. And so they had treasures. It was a high-end yeah. department yes. store for uh -huh. for people with a, a large size purse mm -hmm. <laughs> and wanted things that they couldn't find normally and mm -hmm. stood for quality. And, and Gums lived, is a long time in San Francisco. Yes. He lived in uh, the Gaylord Hotel for all the time that I really remember. Where was the Gaylord Hotel? Uh, that was. What part of the city? It was downtown, mm -hmm. um, not on Powell Street. Maybe, but in that area. In that area, maybe Grant. It's going right. up. It's still there. Yes, it's I know still the there. name. Um, I've been I've been told that your life, if you could, maybe more, but could be broken into five parts. Just about. Just yeah. about. And I'd love to know more about each of those parts, and maybe you can tell me. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's take it from there. Okay. okay. Well, of course, I was a student, first of all. Growing up in San Francisco as a student was wonderful. I had everything at my disposal, being artistically inclined. I studied piano, and I had wanted to be a concert pianist. And I studied with a concert pianist until I was 14. And, um, or I should say, between the ages of 12 and 14, I studied with Zephyr Reed uh, over on Divisity near to visit Arrow Street. And, um, was there a, a studio you'd go for your lessons? I, she had me come, after I started with her for a while, I guess she liked me well enough, she wanted to coach me every day. So I had to go there every day. And uh, she was a magnificent teacher. And the things that I learned then, I still can play. Wow. So that was uh, 
quite an accomplishment for my life, and it really opened up music for me. I really didn't know too much about it before then. I had studied it ever since I was four years old. Uh, with a German family, um, that's one of, sort of like the Bachian families, you know, they all play instruments. Sure, sure. This is the way they raise their kids. They have, that's part of their education. And so, and they are strong disciplinarians, and they, they tell you, you're going to practice now, and so you sit down and you practice, <laughs> or you're going to go to this class, and you go to this. I never um, tried to find a teacher for myself. They would always present a teacher. Wow. So it was very, lucky. very good. Very, very yeah, fortunate. Yeah. They were so one people. part of you is the learner. Yes, the study. student. And the student. then um, when I was in high school, a very important thing that I learned was typing. And I guess I had that uh, connection already from the piano. And uh, so I was an excellent typist, and I could type over 100 words a minute. Wow. So which later on served me very well uh, to help me to raise my children. I do. Um, but I will, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Sure, sure. So um, that, that was the early part, and also the dancing. So you and took I, dance I, classes? I, I took dance lessons with uh, Halpern Lathrop dance group here where, in San, where was um, that? Peter's Wright School of Dance. And that was in what um, area of the And city? that is, uh, I don't know the exact street sure, it's sure. on, but it's it's like um, close to Sacramento, California gotcha. Street. Um, in that general area, um, Lyon Street, sure. or, or a, fur, a little further down from there. Sure. I, I don't know if there's still an existence. How long did I you think study they dance? Might be. I studied dance for seven years before I became a professional dancer. How old were you then? And I was... When you were professional. Became like a professional dancer when I was 21. But before, I'm getting ahead of my, sure. my, my five things okay. that I did. <laughs> I, I, next, after I became was a student and, and very proficient, I, I also won an award in school as um, a top scholar. Um, I won the American Legion Award uh, for all-around student, and um, so I was very interested in school and learning. I've always loved books. I love to read, and so then after I went through school, I married very young when I was 17. That was because of the dissolution of my right. uh, my family, um, and I was lonely for. A, a relationship of a family. Sure. I had been going from um, uh, an aunt. I li lived with my father's sister while I was growing up, a German family, and then um, the various foster homes. And I was very lonely. And so uh, I met this fellow who was five years older than I, and uh, he was a return um, Marine. It was after the first, Second World War. The Second World War stopped, uh, came to a conclusion when I was 14. And um, so I married him, and then I had two children. What were their names? Lois and Bruce. Mm -hmm. And Lois is a magnificent painter. Wow. Her father was a painter. He had a lot of artistic uh, he designed book jackets, and he was a great cartoonist. But she became a very classical, um, beautiful. She paints in acrylics and oils, and her, her things are just magnificent. So it's in the family. It's very really strong. Family. And my son is also very artistic, but he became an electrical engineer, mm -hmm. or I should say a construction engineer. He works in um, Kansas City now in a power plant. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how he. Um, so I that that's a whole uh, area of my life that um, w it was very important that I support my children, and um, that first husband uh, had abandoned myself and my two children, and he was very unstable after the war, and he just disappeared and left me with the children and. Um, I had to find some way to support them, and so that's how I got into dancing professionally. Where were you living at this time? I was living on Market Street, um, close to Church and DuBose. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's up a little bit on Market Street, uh, closer to the Mint. 
around there. And close to the, the, the dance studios of Guillermo del Oro, who was a very famous Spanish dancer, uh, da dance teacher. And, um, and so um, I was... So that's, very, that's so two I, parts of your life. So, the, the, yes, then I became the professional dancer. Gotcha. And I wound up in Las Vegas. And um, because I, we heard from one of the studios, at the Halprin studio, they were talking about opportunities open in Las Vegas for dancers to get jobs. And I desperately needed money to support my children. And, um, and I was told that they changed their, their uh, shows every nine weeks. And so uh, I would be sure to get a job because women were not a very uh, stable. They were having children, were having divorces. They were um, coming and going, and I would certainly be able to get a job there. So my uh, friend from my youth, uh, uh, Camila Bonnickson, that I grew up with, uh, loaned me $70. I was destitute at this time, and uh, I went up to... Um, Las Vegas, and um, I didn't have a, an agent. I just had my good looks and my seven years' experiences <laughs> learning dancing, classical dancing, flamenco, um, modern dance, and ballet. That's, that was my classical training. And I got well, a job right away <laughs> they, at the Sands. And my first job. I would job, love to see some of your photos. The first of you job I had practically and, uh, was was with the with a person that owned part of the Sands, and that was Frank Sinatra. So um, it was kind of an interesting thing that I should fall into to this. But the, I think just, we can just go through a few I'll just of those go one by briefly. After. Sure. Yeah, th some of the people that I worked with in in Las well, Vegas. Well, we want to try to do a stand up. And binder. this was a time when there was nothing in Las Vegas except desert. Of and course. Only seven big. Uh, it would be really um, helpful if they were stood up yeah. perfect, because then we okay. can get rid of the glare. So there's, there's. Ocean Show us Alcola. where you are. In I'm that on photo. the end, right here. Is the tallest one in the group, and that's Frank Sinatra. I mean, that's, that's Jimmy Durante. Jimmy, Jimmy Durante, and this was Carmen Miranda, and that's you. Yes, and this is the Dorsey brothers. Yes, I danced with them, and also Xavier Cougat, but I don't have a picture of him. He didn't right. have one at the time. That is in San Francisco. This is in shot. San Francisco. Later on, uh, in the seventies, when I came back, and I. I was a model, uh, a Powers model at that right. time, and I m posed at the uh, American Legion of Honor. Beautiful photo. for this picture, and where I had previously danced as a girl. Wow! In small concert work, and then this is Frankie Lane. You know the picture of me, and and it's Frank Sinatra. What is it autographed? Yes, it's autographed. To Louise? To Louise, with love. Sorry, that's Not an embossed one. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And um, have some nice stories about him. And this is when he was younger. Sure. This is when he was a little older. He was a great gentleman and a very kind person. He was very, very nice to all the production dancers and singers. And he was, um, if anyone was in the hospital, he saw that they got roses. Any of the girls that he was just very kind. And who is this um, right here? This is uh, Eddie Albert. That's right, okay. Yeah. And these uh, are the Martinez, the flamenco dancers. And there's me. What is this one? I'm dancing. Uh, that's part of the book that I've written called Poems for Young Dancers. All during this time, I started writing poetry when I was in Vegas in the 50s. Yes. And I became a reclusive poetess all my life. I didn't like what I saw going on and um, what they called poetry to me was not poetry. Sure. And I was very upset by the, and that's just the end of it. Yes. There. It's wonderful. Okay. Those are the, some, some of the people I worked with. Yeah, that's wonderful. So. I'm, I'm going to, I want to, I want to bring us to the Haight-Ashbury a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we came when, back. When we came, when you came back and you moved to the, to the Haight-Ashbury area? 
What was that about? Well, uh, what was that about? No, what year about? Uh, Did you move year back? Year seventy-eight. Okay. Now you're tr you're ju you're jumping, jumping twenty years of being a mother and um, a medical transcriptionist and typist. Um, I had the opportunity to take care of my children in that way. I was always interested in science, and so I. I had the opportunity to become a secretary to many people, Super. to many doctors what in the Hawthorne you, Community Hospital. What brought you back to the Hague to live? Um, well, I, I met and married my hus my present husband. I, I met him at uh, a dance, and a church dance in Hollywood. Wow. <laughs> and he was on his way back to Samoa. <clears throat> and I was on my, I was just living there at that time. And um, we married after a whirlwind courtship of about two months. We've been married now for 34 years. Wow. We have a home in Tonga. have a little picture of our little home in Tonga. And he's, uh, he was a, a prize fighting champion wow. in Tonga. Very powerful man, good man, kind heart. But Tonga, where's Tonga? Well, some people may it's mid central South Pacific, it's below Samoa. West of Tahiti, north of Australia, and east of New Zealand. Okay. Mid Central South right. Pacific. It's a kingdom, the last Polynesian kingdom. And that's a whole story in itself. That's when I became a teacher. Sort of. <laughs> Because right. I needed to get. We, we only have about eight minutes left, okay. and I wanted to pull it so, all together. Because we're going to probably mm -hmm. be asking you back. Mm -hmm. um, but to to just quickly finish the five we talked about. Mm -hmm. So then we had student, mm -hmm. dancer, mother, mother. Mm -hmm. You tell me all the five. The student goes with with the, the dancing. Sure. So you tell then, me all five. Then the, then the mother. And. Uh, Teacher. Um, then, uh, yeah, mother, and then um, the dancing, professional dancer. Then um, secretary and a teacher. Teacher. A teacher. And I see being a writer as yes. well. And all this time. And you've I've written a writing. book. Uh, uh, I have written. Called? I've written a book called uh, that is a historical. Novel of Tonga. Oh, wonderful! Is it fiction or not fiction? It's a historical novel. Oh, beautiful! It's based on fact. Beautiful. A very interesting uh, time in Tonga's uh, existence. I would tend to think that even now, living in the Haight Ashbury, as you do in this area, around a lot of creative, free thinkers, mm -hmm. um, it leaves you the space to be yourself when you go home. Yes. Well, that's this partly is the first time of, I've ever. A lot of people live in the Haight Ashbury. I have never publicly. Uh, read my poem, poems or any of my works before. I, I would love to and have us have you read something if you have something you enjoy that you've written. Oh, I wanted to show you my little poem. Did I show you my yes. poem? Yes, oh, I did. Show you. I'd love to tell us what it's called. And, uh, I'd love well, to hear it. This is my. This is why I became a reclusive poet. Sure. And it's, under the, it's called Poems for Young Dancers. Okay. It's called Our Poets. Many are the golden-throated frogs that bellow all around. Many are the singers who would sing without a sound. There are those who are far wiser, wiser far than they, that sit beneath a palm and think and say not yea nor nay. And this is called the search. Straight, strong words of truth I seek. Nothing vague, nothing weak. Symbols forceful, simple, and true, giving classic clarity for homage to. So that was my philosophy and why I, I became it. a reclusive poet for so long. And I'll read one more sure, to finish it. this off. And this was called The Heart of a Mystery. Early spring has passed, grows now summer's glow. Planted seeds now quickly spring and tender seedlings grow to quickly take on newborn life, 
fresh, strong, and sapling new, and all life's old complaints do fade and falter in their view. What miracle of life lies here that science can't discern? When to the moon and back we've flown, yet every seed that e'er was sown spontaneously springs to life and owns its portion of this earth. Spontaneous thrust, the seedling's power, whence comes this awesome thing? Prime mover, Yahweh, Allah, God? His name's diverse as tongues above, who holds with power this mighty key, confounding all its mystery, that of creative love. That's beautiful. I can understand why you live in a hate ashbury I can understand um, the inspiration I've heard on your life that you've given me as well. And I'm sure those that will see this tape 50 years, 100 years from now, uh, can understand why you're a part of this community. Um, I ask you one last question. If you had a net and you could capture a moment in life that for whatever reason was most inspiring to you, and that somebody was watching this video 50 years from now could listen and watch and learn. What moment would you catch and why? That was the most inspiring to me? Yes. Was when I was baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That was the most right thing I ever did in my life. And I have been in that church for 50 years as a teacher, as a conductor of music, as a librarian, and have a great many people that I love very dearly and have been very supportive all my life. And it's been a great guiding light for me. The Spirit of the Lord has been with me since that time to this present moment. And that was undoubtedly the greatest moment of I think that's beautiful. And hopefully it's understood by those who watch this in the future. And I am honored to have you here. I want to tell you thank you so much for sharing your moments with me and putting them on tape with this video oral history project of the Haight-Ashbury. And I can see why you are a resident of the Haight-Ashbury and part of this family. And again, thank you so much uh, for being here. And uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful addition to the library. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome.